Okay, firstly, thanks for the uh, wonderful introduction. And uh, let me start, you know, uh, from where Dr. Triveni uh, stopped actually, and even Dr. Rajesh, he also talked about uh, multimedia forensics as such. So uh, today's talk, which I'm going to give you or discuss with you is regarding the challenges and future of digital forensics. Let me tell you one thing that, uh, a disclaimer before that, whatever I'll be talking to you will be uh, nothing to the, you can say, the cases which I have solved or nothing to with the present appointment I am tenanting. But however, it will, I'm sure that they, it will have a lot of takeaways uh, for the, especially for the, you can say, the forensic enthusiasts or professionals who are uh, working on different cases. Because all of us who are into this field, we know that every case is different and uh, it has to be approached in a very different manner. Uh, and also the takeaway should be that you should be ahead of the curve and, uh, you know, predicting future in DFIR is more important uh, and uh, getting the path right in the investigation also is more important. Uh, the most important thing or you can say the output or the final outcome of any forensic analyst is the, you can say a forensic report, which should be accurate and credible and must stand legal scrutiny. And uh, as all of us know that uh, forensics is a techno legal field because you know your report finally has to be read or it has to be accepted by the court of law. And it also have to be uh, accepted by you can say the defense lawyers or the, uh, as such. Challenges of course lead to the future and that's what we'll be talking of today. But one thing which I would like to tell you is uh, when we speak of digital forensics, most of uh, the people or the who are working into it uh, or who want to come into this particular niche domain, uh, you know, uh, niche field, sorry, they, they are unable to explain in a layman terms what digital forensics is. But it's as simple as it, it is actually you're producing or preparing a digital evidence to be produced in the court of law. I will not get into the, you can say definitions and about uh, various things, but let me start with a case study and I actually, planned this case study five minutes uh, just before uh, when Triveni ji was actually speaking on of ransomware attacks, right? So I thought, why not tell you uh, how a ransomware attack, latest ransomware attack and what is the role of a forensic analyst or a forensic, you can say lab in this particular case. Because most of the cases nowadays coming, if it's ransomware indirectly, cryptocurrency is involved, right? Uh, and also one another aspect which even uh, Dr. Rajesh uh, spoke about is multimedia forensics and uh, even Triveni Singhji uh, actually mentioned about deep fix. So by these, uh, you know, by these kind of crimes uh, uh, taking place, you understand or you will understand that the role of the forensic analyst at the lab is becoming much, much difficult as it was. Uh, prior to uh, this, uh, prior to, you can say, a few years back. So regarding the case study, I'll not read what is on the slide. You can read it, but let me tell you, everyone is aware of this colonial pipeline ransomware attack which took place in which was an attack actually uh, means carried out by dark side. Uh, if you must have read the media reports as such. Now what had happened in this, the, it was, uh, you can say that this particular company or uh, was a target of a ransomware attack. Now, if you see an idle architecture of ICS industrial control systems, uh, you see that we have an isolated uh, network which has, you can say the, you can say the ICS components as such PLCs, or you can have some sensors which are there, which is either segmented or totally cut off from the uh, enterprise network as such. Most of us who are into forensics are very crude up in doing forensics of, you can say, enterprise networks, is normal computer systems or servers or network. But, uh, but when it comes to, you can say ICS, uh, you know, the kind of forensics which is required is at a different level because of the various, you can say shortcomings or you can say uh, of the con control systems in place. Like you have the PLCs, you have legacy systems in place in some cases. And plus, you know, the shortage of memory connectivity and so on and so forth. So you can imagine uh, the, what, what, uh, how uh, means what uh, condition or uh, what mental you can say uh, condition the analyst goes through when he's actually trying to carry out a forensic analysis of the this kind of a you can say uh, system in place. Now let me tell you also that 
Trivani Singh, uh, Dr. Trivani Singh said about, you know, his role as an investigating officer and types of cases coming to him. But, you know, uh, you, it's a, it's a, you can say this is a jigsaw puzzle and it fits well when a forensic analyst and the investigating officer actually comes to a same, I means uh, forensic analyst has to back up or provide the evidence from whatever the investigating officer is investigating. So as an analyst, actually you are giving, you can say a statement of fact, or you're not concluding, you're not giving an, any conclusion to the case, but you're actually assisting the investigating officer like Dr. Trivini Singh to solve the cases, irrespective of the type of case it is. Now also continuing with the case study, you know, there was a ransom which was paid of 5, uh, five million, but also you also heard, uh, you have heard of this news that it was also recovered back. Now it's very few people are surprised how this ransom ransom was recovered back when it was paid in cryptocurrencies as such, and some media outlet also mentioned that okay the FBI had the private key to, uh, to the access uh, to Bitcoin and had Bitcoin addresses, but you know the key to this is of course forensic investigation of the you can say uh, ICS system which I just mentioned and. You know, uh, forensic is also involved when it comes to crypto exchanges and cryptocurrency or blockchain forensic. If you see this, uh, it was recovered by actually giving the specific address of, uh, you can say, a valid key where, where the currency or where the transaction has taken place. So here also forensic plays an important role, although uh, people uh, do mention it in a very low tone, but forensic, yes, has played an important role in recovery of the ransom which was paid. It's not that easy because as I mentioned that every case is different. Now, uh, after the case, let me tell you forensic sign, everyone knows it's been discussed in your theory in various uh, presentations. So I'll not stress more on this. It's basically you are actually doing a systematic and coherent scientific study of, you know, you are actually creating a digital uh, crime scene uh, when you're actually doing the case. So as an analyst or when you're in the lab and trying to solve any kind of a case. Now, if you see the definition of forensics, although again, this is known very well known to you, I just want to stress on two words, scientifically derived and proved method. That means actually you are supposed to, any forensic analyst should be able to uh, retrieve the same kind of evidence by using the same tool or same, you can say uh, methods which are used by any other forensic uh, professional. Uh, coming on to, you know, forensic, uh, digital forensics is a part of, you know, forensic science or a branch of forensic science, but there are a lot many sub branches which are there. Initially, you had computer forensics, you know, and computer forensics again is split into many disciplines, like one discipline was covered by Dr. Rajesh was multimedia forensics. But within that, you have host forensics, memory forensics, and so, uh, some kind. But all this, you know, it again comes under computer forensics. But apart from that, if you see the various other sub branches, the another major sub branch is mobile. Nowadays, the uh, most another important uh, sub branch is coming up is basically the IoT. The drones are playing an important role. I mean, that's one sub branch. Then you have satellite, automated, SCADA. I spoke, uh, spoke about IoT, uh, GPS, uh, and uh, even within IoT, you have industrial Internet of Things, right? Industry 4.0 is coming. So the role, or you can say the task of forensic analysis is going to get tougher and tougher. Now, why I'm mentioning this, this actually comes to, I means you can draw some conclusion from this is that if any forensic professional is trying to, you know, uh, uh, means go ahead in the career, uh, uh, with his career in this particular niche field, it is recommended that he pursues one or two of the sub branches because you cannot concentrate on all the branches. And it means it's not possible, humanly possible to be an expert. Like again, I'll try make a mention of Dr. Rajesh, he's doing into multimedia forensics, right? So it, that doesn't mean he doesn't know about uh, digital forensics as such. You can have a knowledge of, uh, of digital forensics uh, field as such, but if you specialize, you have to specialize in any one or two kinds of domains. By default, you are crewed up in computer forensics and mobile forensics to some extent due to the availability of tools and you can say research or uh, you can say resource material, which is av readily available. But it, when it comes to other kinds of forensics, it is a tough time, uh, not say a very tough time, but yes, there you have to, uh, you have to look for it. Uh, you know, means you have to look for it. Uh. Now coming on to the primary challenge, like what is the challenge in forensics? All of us are facing people who started their careers, say two decades back. 
you know first we it was i'll not say easy it was easy in the sense that the number of devices coming to your lab was less but now if you see every house if you take a household also and if you have one access point let's say internet connection coming to your line you under every one of us know there'll be at least 10 to 12 or 15 devices in every household there may be a laptop computer three four mobiles some other gadgets which are connected so you see this so there, this is called the problem of plenty in forensic community or forensic digital forensic as such so there are so many devices coming and you know and so with that the number of that uh, you can say the quantity or you can the size of data is uh, uh, it's increasing now when you there's a second problem which is all, uh, which needs to be addressed is problem of capacity like initially the devices came with very small capacities like you had i remember even the computer system which i first brought had 120 mb of hard disk space right now you you have terabytes of data on even on a single storage media such as a pen drive or which you carry uh, in and out uh, so there's a problem of capacity and problem of plenty and this is leading and affecting the forensic laboratories in processing and reviewing because the more the data the more the processing time the more the reviewing time the delay in cases pendency increases so this is a primary challenge although not a technical challenge but you know it is a you can say a resource challenge i'll call it because here you will require more number of labs more number of skilled people who, who are the analyst who require to do the jobs and uh, again uh, tools have to be improved the technologies and tools which are coming out have to be of the state of art so these are uh, this is two problem this is one last year's report which i just want to uh, mention it was from one of the uh, uh, from celebrate most of as on date most of the devices coming to the laboratories are smartphones and it is true initially the computers to come then laptops but nowadays most of us are smartphones are and variety of wearable devices are increasing and one important thing is that 6 out of 60% or 6 out of 10 devices are reaching in locked condition hence the extraction of data from and also encryption encrypted apps are being used that also challenges every every device has a you can say a first second third tier of you can say security mechanism in terms of biometrics or pins or some kind of encryption and then you go to app level encryption you have you have the container or you can say the storage level encryption is there this is posing a lot of problems to the forensic analyst as such and the backlogs it's global trend you know backlogs are increasing because of the two issues which i just discussed with you and every and one more problem which is now which is which is there and will be there for a longer time is that every case has something related to with cloud based data and with the you can say the you, uh, the cloud services in different parts of the world and it actually hampers the investigations of both the especially of the investigating officers because and even of the analysts in uh, for you know solving or doing analysis of particular cases now uh, i'll not get into the ai part because ai is a problem also and solution also because ai will be used in industry 4.0 and beyond and robotics and all which may come now henceforth this kind of devices will come to your laboratories for analysis but they are part of solutions also because the ai based solutions also will be used for solving digital forensic cases so this i have already discussed regarding the challenges of lock phone now one basic challenge which i love to speak most of the time is regarding the solid storage media solid state devices as a forensic analyst you know the biggest problem you face is actually proving the integrity in the court of law and if you don't know the technologies used in different kind of storage media also then it is very difficult to actually stand or you can say you can say support your case right so nowadays every every you can say gadget comes with a solid state device and even if you go at the server ends uh, if you are in the sock or if you are trying to get some kind of uh, data center or something like that you will have a hybrid kind of a situation where you will have you know or uh, means sas uh, hard disk and even uh, ssds uh, which is a, in a hybrid mode so you should know ki what kind of device you are analyzing and that actually help will help you in actually finding out or you can say proving in the court of law or carrying out analysis also because there have been ins instances at least in my professional experience where i have lost out on evidence because initially uh, i did not pay attention to what kind of or what technology was used in the storage part right and other issues are there with solid state regarding proprietary encryption compression you know these are already there are there are issues which will which are there in this uh, for which are faced by the uh, analysts as such 
coming on to mobiles mobiles uh, uh, you know there are a lot of solutions available but let me tell you whatever solutions you have in your lab or this you know i'll put it that maximum times you'll fail like i it was that case 6 out of 10 devices are mobile devices also 6 out of 10 times you'll fail while doing mobile forensic you know because as i said there are a lot of hurdles for a forensic analyst starting from even you know uh, as i said regarding the first second third tier of encryption or security mechanisms put even the type of operating system on that mobile if you have iphone you will have a different set of problems regarding key chains and you can say some other thing if you have android you have a different set of problems if you have blackberry or symbian you have a different kind of problem but they uh, but when i say 6 out of 10 that doesn't mean there they are they are only failures you can still go uh, go across bypass you have a lot of solutions which are available in the market uh, and uh, but let me tell you at the end of the day solutions tools yes they are very handy and you know they are used in a very big way but the, at the end of the day forensics you know you have to do a manual level or you can say low manual level uh, uh, forensics uh, plays an important role when actually solving the cases now the most of the mobiles coming as i said they are there's physical tampering done uh, there are so many papers which are being now nowadays written on you know tampered device damaged devices and even they are also mention about the various technologies or you can see even if the uh, carrying out forensics re relating to social media uh so, mr prince also mentioned about various you can say uh, while doing uh, multimedia forensics or uh, the new you can say techno techniques which are coming into and uh, of course the cloud is a hindrance or i can say now if you get such kind of devices to at your lab you know the next step is to what kind of uh, what what will be your approach now approach is multi pronged you know and uh, in such cases you require uh, you know other uh, other uh, tech, advanced techniques like jtag chip off or in system programming as such other problems which are faced by a forensic analyst is the i mentioned about encryption this the stenography there's wiping default mode if someone has done the default reset the, you know overwriting of data metadata there's obfuscation so there are lot of challenges which are there when you actually analyzing case i'm not trying to demoralize you but i'm trying to tell you ki there are challenges and if a person who into this particular kind of profession which is a niche profession then you have to actually overcome this challenges or at least have patience to try out all the possible you, you can say approaches which are there in that particular thing now over even i would like to tell you here ki over two decades of my into this particular field i myself i every case i discuss with my subordinates or my team members and Yeah, and they give me better solutions, uh, uh, of course. And it's a, it's a co you can say collective effort when the challenges come to you. IoT, IoT is coming in a big way. Uh, uh, I would like to go one step ahead, and I just mentioned about Industry 4.0. So we as a community has to has to work on you uh, firing or uh, for framing or finding frameworks or coming out with frameworks for Industry 4.0. regarding robotics how how you if there is a supply line say for example automotive uh, automotive factory as such so how forensics will be carried out and here and one important thing comes is the forensic readiness now this on forensic readiness i can speak in long but uh, forensic readiness is required especially when it comes to uh, devices such as iot iot because as i said ki the memory is small the storage is in somewhere cloud uh there are there 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 are chances of tampering their destruction and so on and so forth so this i uh, the iot will play the uh, will place a challenge to the forensic investigator cloud of course everyone is aware that the evidence is scattered on the network on storage in the cloud on the asset so collecting from right uh, right places is very important today morning i was reading a twitter handle a very fine uh, some some Uh, lady had put regarding uh, forensic of virtual machine in which she went very systematically saying that is you know you don't only have to take the you you can see a uh, image of the if your uh, virtual machine there are lot many things you have to collect while uh, while actually taking the uh, image of the machine because you have to take the vmam and other other you know other you can say artifacts uh, and then only you will be able to actually come out come out with a good solution or try out uh, virtual machine forensics as such going ahead smart cities again it's something related to iot is only uh, this is the thing we, we uh, when the smart cities come up how 
how policing will play an important role and you know forensic policing i will call it will play an, uh, another important role because now police will also have to have a forensic cells it's already they have the cyber crime lab but i feel now every station will have to have something related to uh, you know impromptu forensic uh, you can say a, a solution or a support as such because when the smart cities uh, we, uh, are coming up there are a lot of you can say uh, components like i've just uh, taken from one of the research papers regarding there will be smart grid there will be uavs vehicles iot sensors cloud and there you, you see the challenges which are coming out the data big data how artificial intelligence will ro play a role is not also of big data it's also of iot where i said ki, again the memory is a problem integrity will be a problem maintaining integrity will problem then also you are also will be how will you able to uh, do the live forensics laugh if you can do forensics of say uh, live network traffic can you do a forensic of live drones uh, to what level you'll do so and uh, you can say the forensic data is will be of so multi multifold that you will have you can say not only multimedia files you will have gps data system logs then you will have uh, of course you have the other kind of log like ips ids and other uh, network based devices which are there i think i have surpassed time i mean how much time do i have dr ranjit I, I i do i have 10 minutes yes sir 10 to 15 minutes you can take sir okay so the challenges which i always use this slide of mine because you know i've discussed the classical problems but you know the, the bigger problem is of skilled manpower there there's a shortage of you know, forensic professionals into by, by at the law enforcement agencies at the fsls even the judiciary because they also require some forensic uh, training and skilled manpower to actually analyze the reports and you know when it goes to the court as every case nowadays has a forensic element associated with it so skilled manpower is a dire shortage but yes there are a lot of students and enthusiasts who want to make a career into this but i i, I see problem here at a different level you know nowadays you are getting people who want to come into forensic study and someone rightly brought out, like Dr. Rajesh said, we need a proper skill set. You know, you can't have uh, anyone just coming into the field and trying to work it out by a one month course or something like that. He has to be trained. He has to have hands on. He has to be had done some internship somewhere. So skilled manpower is an issue. And I see a major shortage at the mid and senior level management or mid or senior level forensics analysts because there are a lot of people who are coming and wanting to join. But at the we have very less people who are actually at a, you can say with the experience, say 10 years plus or something who are working into this field. But that cannot be addressed. See, we, have to, we have to wait for another five years till the other people actually come up and uh, India becomes a superpower in terms of you know, providing forensic professionals globally. And it will come surely. The next problem which I foresee is commercial tools. You, all of us know it's very costly. And someone, people say, they, of course, uh, open source tools are there to support. But when it comes to working in laboratories and actually going to courts, you know, uh, it is uh, it is recommended that you use you know uh, commercial tools which are uh, state of art tools or you can say NIST approved tools, you know which have some credibility uh, and which you can prove it in a very simplistic or easy manner in the court of law. Training again is a very costly affair, and these uh, for, uh, conferences such as these, you know, and uh, and which various professionals giving their insight about uh, in the work which you are doing uh, it's very it should be very handy for people who are actually coming into this field so this is a challenge uh, where i say the cost of training and cost of tools is a challenge another challenge which i see is the cyber laws all of us knows the gdpr will uh, come in and how how privacy will actually affect the forensic analyst whether you'll be have whether you'll have access uh, whether you'll have the mandate to look over the privacy private or conversations of private data which is held in the devices which are come for analysis. Jurisdiction is an issue. There are no international cyber laws. All of us know that is a challenge. Changing technology, I've already spoken on this, but yeah, changing technology, there'll be always be an addition in some form or the other after every six months or you can say a year or so of the various technologies coming in. So uh, we have to actually pull up our socks and uh, actually try to uh, find out ways and means to, uh, you, you know, do a, do a work as such. Anti-forensics, I mentioned there are a lot of anti-forensics, uh, which will 100% be done when the device comes to your laboratory for analysis, because uh, no, no accused will like to give you on a platter and say that, okay, this is what, take what you want. 
backlogs will be a issue uh, it has to be addressed at a national level or at a higher level by you know getting new labs uh, notifying new labs coming uh, having uh, a number of professional inc uh, professionals increasing them and preservation of evidence again due to no, your judiciary I, I i placed it under a challenge because you know the cases go for so long that sometimes the evidence get tampered or destroyed and it's not available when the case is at the peak or when the evidence is required for investigation now let me tell you what will make the difference as such you know the future of digital forensics what i foresee is you know iot or iot you have to work on that find i mean have frameworks for that crypto Currencies, all of us have mentioned, starting from uh, Dr. Trivani Singh also, that the cases related to ransomware, it is going to increase. There will be no shortcuts here. Drones, if you read the news daily, drones are used for all kinds of activities. I'll not get into that. Virtual machines, deep fakes, audio video forensics, artificial intelligence and machine learning, it will be on both sides of the fence. It will be it, it will be required, there will be a requir requirement of carrying out forensics on it, and that will be used for carrying out forensics also. So this is how it will work. Now coming on to dark web, and I've not mentioned few, I've just mentioned a few, very few, means a few of the important, you can say, fields within digital forensics, which in next few years to come, or in a year or two maximum, you will be doing, you know, analysis of such cases in the laboratories or in your, you can say, positions. Now I have finished in time. I was given uh, whatever time I was given. Uh, I hope I was uh, able to convey the challenges in the digital forensics uh, uh, field as such. And uh, there are a lot many, but only at the end of the session, I would like to say that uh, 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 with the challenge, uh, you know, with every challenge, you learn more, you you improve your skill set, you contribute towards. Uh, uh, your community and you also solve cases at a uh, uh, national level or at, at your entity level, which will assist and try to make a more transparent society. That's all I think I've, uh, I've done, uh, done with that. If any question, I'll, I'll answer it. Otherwise, I'm done with it. Thank you, Dr. Vindu.